We're back at the Line Opinion panel to carry on this discussion and look further into the local response to the events in Charlottesville, Virginia. Albuquerque, Santa Fe, and other parts of New Mexico held rallies this week in protest against racism and hatred. The state's political leaders and major political parties released statements denouncing the recent violence. And Governor Martinez asked New Mexicans to condemn, quote, the white supremacists responsible for this cowardly act, end quote. Good on, good on Governor Martinez there. Diane, hard question, no easy answers. How do we fight hatred? How do we fight something this enormous, given the, the, the images we've all seen now of the size of those rallies in, the, in Charlottesville? The thing that, that I think we're forgetting is Charlottesville is not the first time it, that, that hate existed right. and or that the Klan existed or that uh, people are protesting and fighting against it. Mm -hmm. I think that we have to go back to the deeper problem. Mm -hmm. I believe very much in, in, in civil re resistance. I, I think I support the First Amendment completely. Right. And I think that if you want to do a demonstration of your beliefs, you should be allowed to do so, no matter how distasteful they may be. I don't, because my concern is if we don't let the people demonstrate peacefully mm -hmm. that we disagree with, the next time somebody else is in charge, it might be us that don't get to demonstrate. So I'm very concerned about that. I would rather have, I think first of all, everybody has to commit to civil disobedience. Mm -hmm. Then we start looking at why the hate exists. Right. And, and nobody knows. Maybe, maybe you're a Klan member because your father and your grandfather were. M you were reared to believe that that was the right way. Maybe- And these things are taught as President Obama- You have to, you have to be taught tweet. to hate people. Yes, yeah, right. You don't, you don't get born hating someone. That's right. And so I think it starts with our children. There you go. And I hate to give something back to more work to the teachers, sure. but we need to be educating yeah. at a very young age that, that civil disobedience is appropriate, mm -hmm. but that we're individually, my mother used to say, you're not better than anybody else. Mm -hmm. You're not worse than anybody else, but you're not better than anybody else. Right. And you have to respect and I think that's what it comes down to. Good point there. Um, locally, Merritt Allen, we've had some reactions here uh, that have been really quite puzzling. The Doña Ana County Republican Party Chair, uh, Mr. Jimenez, of course, infamously tweeted or put on a Facebook post that day saying the alt-left, whatever that is, deserved everything that they got. And he has now since resigned. But that sentiment is out there, isn't it? It's not just a Charlottesville thing or something for back east. It's all around us in, in this world right now. I, I think uh, the Republican Party on the local, state, and national level has a real issue because uh, these awful, awful people have somehow decided they have a home with mm -hmm. Republicans. Mm -hmm. And we have to figure out why that is and absolutely repudiate it. And I've come up with a quick three-question litmus test. We love a litmus test in politics, yeah. right? Okay. We're just going to start with the Nazis. Are Nazis conservative? Uh. Okay. Question one. Are Nazis Christian? That's not necessarily important to me. I think this country is founded for all religions. But for a lot of conservatives, this is a big deal. Are mm -hmm. Nazis Christian? No, because here's the problem. Jesus was Jewish. So they're completely repudiated Christianity. They're atheists or they're pagans. Right. Okay, next one. Are neo-Nazis pro-life? Only for white people. So uh -huh. no, that's, that's not acceptable. If you're a real uh, straight pro-lifer, that's not going to work. Most importantly to me, are neo-Nazis going to lower my taxes? No. Wow. I, would end, I would estimate that for non-Aryan taxpayers under a Nazi regime, the uh, uh, minimum tax level would be 100% of all income and assets. Right. So right. these are not our people. That's right. They're not conservatives. And let's, let's be very clear what conservatism is, what small government is, what our, what our values are, and make sure that these, uh, these revolting criminal elements have no home. Mm -hmm. Exactly They're right. claiming us, not the other way around. That's right. Yeah. That's right. You know, and Harry, as we as we sit here and tape here in this part of the week, um, we've got two interesting side issues as well. One of them being, the ACLU has traditionally defended right. free speech, as Diane it's mentioned, right. going back to the Skokie case uh, way back mm -hmm. in Illinois. But for a lot of current ACLU members, this took them by surprise. Mm -hmm. It's a very interesting pushback out there that the fundamental right, I'm not defending the alt-right by any stretch here, right. but just the idea 
to peacefully protest no matter who you are. Touch on that a little bit if you would. It's been interesting to watch. It this. really shouldn't be surprising uh, to ACLU members that the mm -hmm. ACLU would take this stance. And I thought the ACLU of Virginia had a very good uh, statement in the aftermath of what happened in Charlottesville. Right. Uh, uh, Romero, the uh, head of the ACLU nationally, had, I thought, a really excellent uh, statement. The challenge, I think, in the current political environment is to stand for principles that apply across the uh, board. And right. the ACLU made it very clear in its tweeting, uh, in the aftermath of what happened there, but then also in its public statements, we oppose everything these groups stand for, but right. the broader principle of free speech is one that we have to uphold absolutely. That's right, interesting. Pick up on that, uh, that as well, Lord, because again, uh, to Diane's point, if someone is having their free speech muted, it's somebody else's turn down the road, it, no matter how distasteful that might be. And that's a, it's a difficult sell in this environment, but we have other issues to worry about with these alt-right people. That's it, sure. it is, it's a very difficult yeah. place to occupy. And I, mm -hmm. I was just reading a post from a friend of mine who's an attorney at ACLU, and yeah. she is struggles with this decision yep. even internally. And I, I would suspect that there's a lot of ACLU attorneys who have this internal struggle, yeah, where you, yeah. you're repulsed by what these people stand for, mm -hmm. but the, the bigger issue is that First Amendment right to free speech. And, mm -hmm. But I think this, this demonstrates a very different situation. I think, Diane said, this, this was not the first time that, um, that this kind of white supremacy has been um, on display, but I think what was unique about Charlottesville mm -hmm. is that this is one of the first times that I can remember where they were so brazen about their identity. They, didn't, yeah. they don't care anymore That's about right. being um, open about who they are. And you know, it used to be the KKK had hoods for a reason. Right. <laughs> Apparently right. now it's just in vogue to- it's not, well, not like there's a bunch of old guys. Right, no, these, these are, are young people guys. from the cradle, I mean, the guy who so, yeah. allegedly, you know, the, the driver that struck the, the woman who died, he was 20. I mean, what is happening in this in this kid's obviously in this kid's upbringing that's causing him right. um, to do this? And so I think that's the bigger issue. And one of the things that I think has come back for us here in New Mexico is that we're not immune to it. Thank you. Clearly, we're not immune. And I think the troubling part for me about this administration, and I think you you see that with the um, double speak of the president on the one hand, you know, being off the cuff and, and claiming that there's responsibility on both sides, right. then being scripted and then going back off the cuff. I think in both of those situations, it, sh it shows that, you know, people who, who are um, persuaded by this element of the alt-right, um, the white supremacy, and these kinds of notions, they feel emboldened That's because right. of this president. That's right. And given that David Duke is praising him for his words, mm -hmm. Um, it just makes people feel like they're, you know, they're right. And so they basically, right. you know, come out against, that's or right. come out and say what they say. That's right. Let me hold you guys there, but that's all the time we have for the show. But we're going to talk more about this on the web on NewMexicoInFocus.org. Please join us there for more of this conversation.